what's going on guys let's jump right into the materials what you will need is foam board balloons a yard stick your balloon mosaic template tape a blade and a balloon pump and some high shine so what you see me doing right here is putting together my template it's just like a puzzle it's going to be a shoe at the end and i just put the papers together to build a picture i don't overlap them or anything like that but i just tape them down just as you see and once i get them all taped i will cut them out so keep watching Okay, now as you can see, I am just taping together some pieces of foam board to basically make the base of my mosaic. So um, I didn't put together like three whole pieces or anything like that. I kind of have some scrap that I'm putting together. So that's what you see here. That's why it probably looks a little bit odd because I'm just using scrap. So you're just going to put your um like packing tape just on the front side you don't have to put it on the back because once you put your walls together it will hold so that's what you see me doing here okay once you have um your board taped together all you're going to do is start taping down the template um to your foam board so that when you cut it kind of stays in place everywhere else so that's what you see me doing here All right, now that we have that all taped to our board, we are going to start cutting out our shoe. Um, another thing we're gonna do is where you see the lines on the shoe, like the Nike symbol and the sole, we're also gonna start cutting there. Um, you can kind of pick your hand up there if you want. You don't have to do like a straight cut line, but um, you just wanna be able to make markings so that you can kind of see it. Like, I don't know if you can see how I'm lifting my hands and kind of doing, it's just not a steady cut. Sometimes I do a steady cut. I just wanna be able to see it so I can place my walls on top of that. That's all I'm doing. And I'm not trying to cut straight through the foam. I'm just trying to kind of make markings on the board, if that makes sense. Save your scrap pieces um, because you could use them for your base or just for different things. So don't throw away all your scrap pieces. Now, some of them like the smaller, skinnier pieces you won't need, but like the larger pieces, they could be used. So save those.
you're going to want to make sure you have a cutting mat and a yardstick. Okay, now I am starting my walls. I usually make my walls between three and four inches thick. Since we're doing a design that requires some walls in the middle, like for example, with the Nike sign, I'm gonna do some three and a half inch walls and then I'm gonna do some four inch walls for the outside. But that's kind of my rule of thumb. Um, I never go thicker than four inches on my cardboard strips or my walls. Now we're gonna do what's called scoring our foam strips. And this is basically how you would bend your foam board. So like with any type of letters or numbers, if you do any, this is how you do the rounded edges. And you basically are just making, making cuts that are about half an inch wide. And you don't wanna cut all the way through your board. You just wanna kinda of cut through that first layer of foam just so you can bend it. All right, once we get done scoring our strips, it is now time to glue them down. So uh, remember earlier when we made the cuts, um, you know, like along the Nike sign and on the sole and all of that, this is where we glue our pieces and kind of put together the puzzle. So you can do this one or two ways. Um, always have your glue gun on the cool set, um, setting because it's just w way more forgiving and just easier to use like that. So that's what I am doing. So if you have a strip like this that is not long enough, you will just use another strip and cut it, you know, where you need to cut. So that is what you will see me doing. I do use the Bath and Body Works candles to kind of hold my strips in place. So that's what you see there.
So there's no real order on how you want to, what you want to place first on these mosaics. I just do want you guys to remember that if you have a more intricate mosaic like this, where you have, um, you know, the walls on the inside, you want to do the inside first. So say you have a letter P, for example, do the inside of the P and then do the outside, just like I'm doing here. I did the Nike and everything first before I put the outside border on. And for swirls and swishes, like you kind of see me doing here, um, you can do those in pieces just to make it easier. So that is what you see me doing because the board won't bend and fold into, you know, a big swirl. So that's why I've done it in pieces. Now we're gonna do the, basically the border. So that's where you use your taller walls. So those are my four inch walls. Remember I put the three and a half inch walls on the inside. So on the outside, I'm gonna use my four inch walls and I'm gonna put my glue on the inside on the wall on the um, opposite side of the um, slashes. So if you do something simple like a letter, you can actually flip it and put your slashes on the inside so that can be seen. But since there's so much bending to this shoe, um, I'm going to go ahead and put the slashes on the outside. And that's okay because that's not really what the focus is anyway. So don't even worry about that.
I don't know if I mentioned this, but for these mosaics, you're gonna use five inch balloons. So this is what I'm doing here. I am doing my five inch balloons and putting them in the sole of the shoe. Um, when you use your glue gun, remember it is on low temperature. You want to cut the tail off of your balloon. I don't know if you can see that. You wanna put the glue um, right on the wall on the side of the balloon it's going to touch and right on the bottom so that's kind of what i did i put glue in three spots um so you can see how i'm kind of pushing it down in there measuring it cutting off the tail i'll put the glue where it's going to touch the base the bottom and the balloon beside it so keep watching Okay, so when it comes to the next area where um, we're putting smaller balloons, you want to, you don't have to put those balloons in the bottom of the mosaic. You can just glue those to the wall and just leave them up. I hope that makes sense. Um, you can kind of see how I'm not pushing that balloon all the way to the bottom. I'm just sitting it right on the wall so that it doesn't come outside of the frame. That's another important um method to this your balloons should not be coming outside of your mosaic frame i keep all my balloons inside the frame that's what's going to make it look so much better and so much neater another key point to this is to never overlap your balloons you want your balloons beside each other but you don't want them on top of each other. Um, I hope that makes sense. So again, just glue the balloons to the walls and to each other. Um, don't worry about pushing them down, just keep them forward. Um, you can make really, really small balloons just by letting air out of those five inch balloons and tying it. It's really simple. Just put, you know, put, his, put the, fill the balloon up and then just let the air out.
again, I just want to remind you guys that those little tiny balloons I am doing are just simply five inch balloons that I am letting air out of. Um, I'm sorry I didn't show you guys a little better view on camera, but it's it's really not that hard. It's it's, it's simple. Just uh, fill it up and then slowly squeeze the air out of them. Um, you want to try to maybe push them maybe against you or against the table so that it can stay like a round shape. You don't want it to be, you know, like cone shape or anything like that. Okay, so here I'm just kind of filling in a few more areas with some smaller balloons. You can kind of fill until you don't um, see any more white background or just fill until you just don't want to fill anymore. There's no wrong or right way to do this, but I just go in with smaller balloons. Again, as you can see, they're not really um, stacked on top of each other. And if they are, it's just the little tiny ones. Um, you just don't want any big balloons stacked on top of each other because it just looks way neater if you um, are just filling spaces um, and not stacking the balloons. Okay, here I am going to make my base. So basically all a base is is two um, kind of triangle pieces. I would use like a corner piece, not like literally a triangle. I don't even know if, what type of shape is that called? Like an angle, yeah, like an angle. So you're basically gonna have two angle shapes and then like a rectangle or square. So I just kind of made this into a rectangle and this is gonna be an even smaller rectangle. And then the larger piece, I'm gonna cut into two angles and I'm gonna glue that together to make a base. Um, you'll see I'll glue um, the two angles to the rectangle and that will be my base. I'm gonna show you here um, how that goes. So I cut that Jordan symbol out um, with my Cricut. I bought it, I think it's a ping foul from Etsy. You can pretty much get anything <laughs> off of Etsy, but that's what I did. So I'm just gonna glue it with my uh, low glue and just stick it on there. So here you just see me sticking that base onto the back. Um, as you can see, I just kind of take the glue and line the back of my, um, my base, like the straight edge of the angle, um, not the slanted part, of course. And I just stick that onto the back. And I'm gonna flip it around and kind of show you guys. I didn't realize till I was doing it that I didn't, um, I wasn't really showing what to do, but I'll flip it around and you'll kind of get a better understanding of how that uh, mosaic will stand and everything like that. So 
very last thing I do is spray my balloons with high shine and then you are finished.